Okay, um, so hello everyone. Uh, our topic for today's webinar is uh, reducing DevOps burden with JIT-based uh, CI/CD pipelines for APIs. So uh, the two of us uh, will be conducting today's webinar. Uh, I am Malint, an associate technical lead from WC API manager team, and I am accompanied with my colleague Ovindra, uh, who is a technical lead from uh, WSO2 API manager team. So uh, while going through the webinar, uh, we'll encourage you to post uh, any questions you get on the question tab. And we'll take questions at the end of the presentation. And at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll, we'll send the recording and uh, the slides to all the registrants. So, okay, uh, let's begin. So in, um, so in uh, today's webinar, we'll be, uh, talking about uh, what is CICD and why uh, CICD is needed for API management and uh, what are the building blocks of a good uh, CICD strategy and uh, what is the role of the API controller uh, when making a strategy, the strategy a reality. And uh, so at the uh, end of the presentations, uh, we'll uh, show you a small demonstration of for example, API development flow and a CICD pipeline in action uh, that migrate the APIs to different environments. So, yeah, so why uh, CICD is needed? So, um, before ex explaining why we need CICD for uh, API management, uh, let's look at uh, some of the common problems organizations are getting. Yeah, so uh, in most, today's most of the organizations, um, like, uh, so they have identified the benefits of having multiple environments like uh, development, testing, staging, and production. So let's say, uh, so there's a backend developer, uh, develops a backend, uh, backend API, and, API, and uh, he has a, an open API definition for the API he has developed, but uh, he, he doesn't have an idea about how to apply API management uh, to the backend he developed. So uh, the first question is how to enable API management to those APIs and move the APIs to a particular deployment environment uh, such as development. And um, then once moved an API to the development environment, the, the developers can start testing and make sure the API is ready to migrate uh, to the upper environments. So uh, the next problem happens, so how to migrate the APIs to the upper environment? So here, there should be a, there should be fewer uh, manual steps as possible because uh, manual steps can always prone to errors. So and uh, there can be other um, de developers who have sufficient experience in AP enabling uh, API management to a given backend API. So such uh, developers are comfortable with uh, working with the portals to enable API management. So. Uh, once such an API is created in the development environment, so how can we migrate that API to the upper environments? So it's like handling dif different uh, types of uh, API provisioning uh, to different different environments. So and then uh, it's very likely that uh, multiple people and teams work together uh, to develop APIs uh, which need to be deployed in a shared API manager deployment. And in such cases, how can we efficiently deploy APIs while uh, making sure that uh, there are no conflicts between the development teams? And also in most of the cases, uh, when an API is getting migrated to upper to an upper environment, so some of the configurations need to be changed. So the most common example is the backend URL. So for a particular API in the development environment, there can be one backend URL where developer access and in the production environment, there can be a dedicated backend that handles the production transaction. So um, there should be a way to provide those environment specific configurations and apply those accordingly when a particular API migrating one, from one environment to another upper environment. So um, we need to build a good CI/CD strategy that fulfills those needs. 
So uh, the first thing we need to understand is that there's no single solution that can apply to all the and to all the organizations in the world. So uh, to build a good CICD strategy, uh, there needs to be a very good understanding of the organization structure and the culture and etc. So like, uh, for example, uh, there can be a single API teams that uh, own the API development and there are in other cases there can be multiple teams and each team or each teams each team owns some apis in the system and the other teams own the other apis so uh, when we model the solution in such cases we need to make sure that there are no interference between the development teams while doing the api developments and also there are many uh, different cicd tools available such as such as jenkins travis Travis, uh, Jenkins, Travis CI, and uh, GitHub workflows. And also there are uh, several options when we are going to select a source code repository type, such as uh, GitHub, uh, GitLab, Bitbucket, and et cetera. So it's, it is important to evaluate the available options and um, choose the most uh, suitable options, suitable option uh, for the organization. So, um, but however, a typical, so all, uh, um, even though there are different, different types of options to select, uh, a typical CICD process for APIs in WSO2 API manage, manager look like, looks like this diagram. So there are uh, API developers uh, who we call that uh, the backend API developers and also the API publishers who are actually the API product managers. So these, when, uh, so API developers define the uh, interface of the APIs and API publishers applies policies on top of that. And at the end, the, uh, this results uh, in an API project, uh, which can be committed to the version control system. And once the project is committed to the version, version control system, a CI/CD pipeline will be triggered, which might be based on Jenkins or any other similar tool. So the pipeline can be integrated with a special CI/CD special CLI tool, uh, which we call WSO2 API controller, uh, so which is used to easily deploy APIs to different different environments with a few commands. So it is very easy to do it using the uh, API controller. Right, so uh, so let's go through the basic features of WSO2 API controller. So uh, API controller is a base, it's basically a, a command line tool. So it can be easily integrated with any CI/CD pipeline tool easily, such as Jenkins. And there are commands available with it to export APIs from WSO2 API manager into API projects. Uh, and which can be deployed back to another API manager instance. And also um, the same tool can be uh, used to uh, create API projects from uh, a given open API specification. So even though you don't have any idea about API management, API management capabilities, and what are the essential features you should have when you are exposing an API, uh, when you are going to expose an API to the outside world. So in that case, you can use the CLI tool to create an API project. So that will give you all the essential security and other features once uh, deployed that project to AWS or API manager. So uh, yeah, so as uh, mentioned before, the API controller can deploy the API projects to another API manager instance. So, and also when deploying when deploying APIs from uh, one environment one environment to other another uh, a very important fact to consider is that the essential configurations that need to be changed. Yeah, for example, uh, when this particular API uh, mobile store API is in the staging environment. So its backend URL should be staging staging.mobile.com. And it, when when it is going to the production environment, the uh, 
the production, uh, the, the backend URL should be prod.mobile.com. So the uh, so API controller facilitates us to do this uh, very easily based on a given environment-based uh, configuration file for each API. So we'll be looking at uh, at while doing to the demo as well. Yeah. So the other main feature uh, that API controller has is the native JIT integration. So let's uh, take a look at uh, this example. So that has, uh, so this has uh, this JIT repository, which has two API projects, uh, the uh, Pet Store API project and the Mobile Store project. So the two API projects are already, so let's consider that the two API projects are already deployed to the API manager uh, from, the, from the particular, from a particular CICD process. And so they are having the same state as the uh, JIT repository. So now uh, what happens is, so let's say a developer, so some, some developer do some change uh, to the mobile store API and uh, commit it to the uh, JIT repository. So now um, only the mobile store API is changed and the Festo API is not changed and it is uh, in the same, um, in the same previous state. So now, uh, with a single API controller command, you can deploy the change projects only uh, to the API manager environment. So in this case, when you do this API CTL VCS deploy command, um, uh, that particular mobile store only will be Deploy to the API manager instance. So what happens internally is that uh, the API controller communicates it with the JIT repository and identify that only the uh, mobile store API is changed and it will deploy that particular API only. So the and also the demo we prepared is also based on the JIT integration feature and few other concepts uh, that we discussed earlier. So yeah, okay. So um, now uh, I will invite Vindra uh, to explain the demonstration flow and uh, continue with the demo. Yeah. What you doing, Vindra? Thank you, Mahinta. Uh, so uh, before we begin the demo, uh, let's just uh, have a brief overview of the workflow that we are going to follow. So to start with, uh, we're going to have uh, start with an API project, which is uh, a predefined folder structure that will be generated uh, by the API CTL, which will contain all the metadata required to represent an API. Uh, so what we'll be, we will be doing is we will be committing uh, an, a given API project to uh, develop the development branch of a Git repo. And uh, this will be uh, this will trigger a development Jenkins pipeline. Uh, so the uh, this uh, pipeline will make use of API CTL uh, again, uh, specifically the uh, API CTL uh, VCS command to detect the changes that uh, are occurring uh, to the API projects, and it will uh, deploy those specific API projects to uh, development environment, which is running WSO2 API manager. And at the same time, the uh, development pipeline will also run some tests to verify the API deployment. Uh, so once uh, this stage has been completed, uh, the API developer can choose to push changes to production and so they will achieve this by sending a pull request from the dev branch to the master branch of the Git repo. And uh, this will uh, in turn trigger uh, a second production Jenkins pipeline, which will, uh, which will uh, use the API CTL VCS command to deploy uh, the API project changes to the production environment that is running the WS2 API manager. Uh, so this is the complete workflow uh, that we will be following uh, during the demo. So I just want to encourage you all to just uh, 
take a moment to uh, uh, absorb this diagram because it will uh, help uh, help you to keep track of uh, where we are in the demo. Okay, let's uh, begin with the demo now. Yeah. So we are starting with, starting with Jenkins pipeline files. And uh, so first of all, the development Jenkins pipeline file has uh, several stages. We have the API CTL add environment, and then we have the API CTL VCS deploy command that is being run to actually deploy the API projects. And finally, we and then we have the, uh, the testing stage where we run some uh, test scripts to actually verify the API. And finally, we are going to do uh, we are going to execute a logout from the API CTL uh, to end the pipeline. So the production Jenkins pipeline is very similar to the uh, uh, previous uh, pipeline file we looked at. It has uh, the same uh, stages. The only thing that is different is that it does not have a testing stage because we are not going to be running any tests on the production system. Uh, so if all the other stages are the same uh, when it comes to using the API CTL to deploy the API projects. Okay, so uh, let's uh, begin by we are going to be uh, committing the our first API, which is the mobile store API. And so we are starting with an open API specification for this API. So this is the approach we'll be taking for this API. This is the uh, that YAML file. Uh, so this has the complete uh, uh, definition of the API. And we will be running the API CTL uh, init command, which will accept the uh, open API spec as a parameter to generate the API project. Okay, so now the uh, mobile store API project has been generated. So if we look at the folder structure, uh, it looks something like this. Uh, so this is a predefined folder structure for the API project that is generated by the API CTL and it contains all the metadata required uh, to represent the API. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying the uh, icon image that is going to be used in the API manager UIs to represent the API. We're going to copy it into the uh, API project folder structure so that it will be available uh, to the API when it is imported into another environment. So the next thing we, we are going to be doing is we are going to be uh, modifying the API params YAML uh, because we want to uh, define different backend endpoints depending on the environment that is there. So we are going to having, we're going to be having two uh, development environment and a production environment. So it, each of those environments have their own uh, backend URLs defined. So depending on the environment that we are going to be deploying the API to, uh, the relevant uh, backend URL will be picked and assigned to the API by the API CTL. So we're going to make those changes in the API params YAML so that uh, that will be included along with the API project. Okay, so that completes the uh, mobile store API. Uh, so the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, uh, creating a, a pet store API. So this is going to be created directly from scratch in the API manager publisher UI, and we've already done that. So instead of using a uh, open API spec, we have straight away defined it here. So these are the resources available. 
and we're going to be using the API CTL export API command to export this uh, API as an archive file from the API manager. So if we uh, extract uh, this archive file, uh, we will be uh, able to see the API project structure, file structure of the uh, PetSto API. So uh, uh, that will look something like this. So yeah, as you can see there, uh, the PetSto API project structure is there. So, because uh, the PetStow API project already had uh, icon image defined in the API manager publisher, uh, we don't need to explicitly uh, copy it into the API project. Uh, so, as soon as it was ex it is exported by the API CTL, the icon image is already available inside the folder structure of the API project. So we'll move straight away into the into editing the uh, API params YAML file, uh, like we did in the uh, previous API. So in the same way, we want to define the environment-specific backend URLs so that they will be deployed uh, depending on the environment uh, for the API. So we will make those changes in the API params YAML. And the next step is we're going to be copying some uh, test scripts that we have defined. Uh, we've used uh, Postman to define these scripts and uh, they will be invoking the APIs to verify them. And if you just take a look at this, uh, this, uh, these scripts, uh, they'll be executing this uh, shell script. And if you look at this shell script, it uses the API CTL get keys command to actually get an access token for a given API. And this access token will be passed as a parameter to the uh, to the Postman script to actually invoke the APIs to test them out. So these are really useful feature of API CTL, being able to uh, get uh, a key uh, for a given API in order to test it out. Uh, so now that we've completed defining the uh, API projects, uh, we're going to do uh, API CTL VCS init. Uh, so what this will do is it will actually generate the VCS YAML file. So this VCS YAML file is what enables the API CTL to keep track of uh, API project changes in the Git repo. So using this file, uh, it will uh, be able to detect if a given project has been changed depending on the commits that are done to Git and it can make decisions about what needs to be deployed. So now we'll be committing the uh, artifacts that we've uh, added to the local Git repo, and we're going to be pushing it to the remote development uh, branch. Okay, so now that it has been committed, uh, this will uh, trigger the first Jenkins pipeline, which is the development Jenkins pipeline. So if we just look at that, we can see that uh, a job should be should begin right now. And if you look at the output of this pipeline, uh,
Okay, we can see the API CTL uh, deploy VCS deploy function is uh, has executed and the two APIs were deployed, as well as the uh, tests have been executed successfully, and the pipeline has completed. Now, if we take a look at the uh, development environments publisher UI. Uh, we can see that the two APIs have been uh, deployed. So as you can see, the uh, backend URL that has been uh, defined uh, set for the API are the is the development environments backend URL as specified in the API param YAML. So. Uh, that has been set up as expected for the API. And the same has uh, happened for the pet store API as well. So now that we've completed the workflow on the dev environment, we want to push these changes to production. So we will achieve this by sending a pull request from the dev branch to the master branch. So once the PR has been merged, it's going to be triggering the second Jenkins pipeline, which is the production uh, Jenkins pipeline. So if you look at the console output, uh, we can see that the mobile store and the pet store APIs are being deployed using the API CTL VCS command. And the pipeline is completed. So now if we look at the production environments publisher UI, we can see the two APIs. And if we view the endpoint URLs, uh, it's the production endpoint, backend endpoint URL that has been assigned to the API as expected. So the next step, uh, we're going to be doing a change to the mobile store API. And we're going to be doing, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying the uh, open API specification by adding some new resources. Uh, so these are some of the resources that we are going to add, the orders and the orders ID resource. So you're gonna copy these uh, these changes over to the mobile stores API project, uh, and we are going to be modifying the existing uh, open API spec. So now you can see the uh, diff in the editor. So these are the changes that have been done to the existing file. Okay. 
Okay, so now that we have uh, changed it, uh, we're going to be simply completing the uh, open API specification. And we're going to be relying on uh, the, op the API CTL uh, to detect that the specific uh, uh, API has been modified and we're going to see how it how it uh, detects it and mod and deploys this particular API alone. So we commit the changes and we're going to be pushing it to the remote repositories dev branch like we did before. Okay, so this will trigger the uh, development uh, Jenkins pipeline. Uh, so if you look at the output of this pipeline we can see that it's uh, the only the mobile store api has been deployed and the tests have been executed successfully and pipeline has completed so if you look at the uh, development environments publisher ui and uh, view the mobile store api we can see that the new resources have been added to the api so now we're, uh, we're going to push these changes to production uh, so again we're going to be sending a pull request from the dev branch to the master branch So if you look at now that the PR has been merged, uh, the production Jenkins pipeline will be triggered. So if you look at the console output here, Again, we can see that only the mobile store API has been deployed. Uh, so if you look at the uh, production uh, publisher UI, you can see the last updated time is a few seconds ago. Uh, so, and the new resources have been added so we can see that this api has just been updated now and at the same time if you go and look at the other pet store api you can see that the last updated time is seven minutes ago so it has not been modified in any way so you can see that api ctl has specifically only deployed the mobile store api uh, so that completes uh, 
that completes the demo. Uh, so now we have, uh, we can open uh, this time up for some questions. Uh, so we'd like to encourage you all to uh, post your questions in the question tab and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, um, so we have a couple of questions. So uh, uh, let me let me pick one. Um, so we are currently using API control of the families, the API definition, uh, but the problem we have been facing um, uh, after a successful login to um, so I hope I uh, you can see my voice. You can uh, hear my voice. Uh, so, uh, so the question is: We are currently um, using API controller to publish the API definition, um, but the problem we have been facing after successful login to an environment uh, while we trying to import API, we are getting uh, 401 unauthorized um, error importing API. So yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, so there can be. So the main reason for the 401 unauthorized is that. Uh, so so when importing an API, the API C, the API C controller uh, talks to API managers uh, REST REST API. So there is a special REST API to import APIs. So that particular API requires some specific scopes. So basically, the, the user uh, that you are trying to import the, uh, the that you are trying that you use to log in the log in to the API controller should have the correct roles to have this particular scope. For example, uh, if you are an admin user, then there is no so you are you will be uh, getting that particular scope without any problem so but uh, if you are not using an admin user so there can be problems so so if you are using a custom user so there is uh, so there are there are some configurations we need to enable so that that particular user also get that permission to import api so that should be the possible reason so so having not enough permissions so the uh, another question so uh, I did not get the exact meaning of uh, reducing DevOps burden. Can you please explain? Yeah. So the reason we put this uh, title is that so 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 the basically the demo we showed to you. So it can so in the in the demo so we showed to you that there are a couple of APIs that uh, that we have uh, in the development environment and there are a couple of APIs and that particular APIs were pushed to the production. So in a, in a typical flow, there can be like, uh, so in, in a usual flow, uh, you might need to have, so, to, to, so in order to deploy the detected changes only, um, so it is kind of difficult uh, without having that particular JIT, uh, JIT integration feature. So, so it's like, um, so let's say if you have uh, about more than 10 APIs, and if you do a single change to the to a to a particular API, and if you are if your DevOps if your DevOps pipeline is going to uh, deploy all the APIs API projects to a particular environment uh, without considering what what are change what was what was change and what was not. So it could be a problem. So in order to fix that, so what you, what you have what you'll have to do most probably is uh, having these uh, APIs in different different repositories and having individual pipelines to uh, to handle the API changes. So that would be a burden. So so in, if you are if you are going to if you are going to have multiple repositories to have um, have multiple repositories which are having single API, and if you are if you are going to maintain multiple pipelines uh, to handle the handle the API deployment, it it going to be it will be hard to manage. Like so, if you are if you are getting more APIs to the system, so so then it will, it will be again a problem. So 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 in so in this example, in this demo demonstration we showed to you, 
at only single repository and the api controller tool could identify what was changed and what was not and using a single pipeline we could do the changes uh, based on we could do the deployment based, based on the changes so that's why we are uh, we uh, we mean uh, we, that's what we mean by reducing the burden the devops burden uh yeah so uh, another question uh api ctl integration with jit would that be possible with uh, 310 as we are using this uh, uh actually no so because uh, if, uh, jit integration came with uh, 320 version um how can we manage the versions of uh, so actually in 310 you could you can use this uh, the normal import api commands but unfortunately we can't use the jit integration feature because that is not introduced there uh yeah the question uh, how can we manage the versions of apis using cicd uh, i think that is not uh, different to the existing different to the the different to normal apis so you uh, I think you should be able to treat this as two different APIs, and uh, so the same CI/CD pipeline or different pipelines can be used to manage the deployment to the CI/CD through the CI/CD pipeline to the particular deployment. Uh, so for that uh, 401 problem by Ghosh, uh, so he has responded that. So what I suggested earlier was to use an admin user. So he uh, mentions that he is already using an admin user for importing APIs. Um, so then, um, uh, so actually that is kind of uh, a strange behavior. So if that is an admin user, we should be able to import APIs. Uh, so I would like to know what, uh, so what, uh, yeah so so that is a problem uh so let's see like uh, so so yeah so we have this uh, slack channel so basically we should be so we have we'll have to further investigate what is the problem with that so better you can uh, if you are, if you haven't joined the set channel of api manager so you can join that and uh, ask the particular question okay i think we have another question about it so we can update uh, from the publisher to be put to the uh, yeah so i think what we demonstrated in the second api was that scenario actually so the api was defined in the publisher and after defining the API in the publisher, we use the API CTL to export that API to create the API project. And that is what uh, uh, was uh, pushed to GitHub. So that's how uh, that was achieved. So that's possible, yes. Uh, the question, this question. Uh... This mechanism work with the GitHub Actions uh, or just only with Jenkins? Um, I think uh, we should be able to get this working in GitHub Actions, uh, or, although I haven't tried it before. Um, so it it, on, it does not, uh, I mean, uh, it does not only stick with Jenkins. It can be, uh, so ideally it should be used, could be used with any kind of uh, CI CD pipeline uh yeah so it's not only not just only with jenkins uh yeah so uh, i think there's a question about uh, wanting more information about uh, the structure when it comes to uh, custom sequences uh so uh, actually if you go to our uh, product documentation uh, there are some examples there uh, that uh, clearly show how you can actually uh, do uh, sequence changes uh, to the API project uh, and use and import those changes using API CTL. So I'd encourage you to uh, actually go and look at our product documentation and uh, there are some examples and uh, outline and it's outlined how you can achieve that. Uh, this CICD works same for API Manager 3. Uh, so GitHub uh, integration is 
not there in 3.0, but uh, without using, I mean, but there are some other commands that, uh, so even it doesn't have native JIT integration, you can still do, a, you still build a CICD pipeline with uh, API manager 3.0 and API controller 3.0. Uh, so using um, uh, API CTL import API and export API commands. So you, if you can uh, refer to the documentation, so, so there are separate uh, documentation uh, documentation for building specific, specifically for building CI/CD pipelines for each API manager version. So you can refer to that. Uh, so uh, I think so the particular example that we used. Uh, 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 I think there's a question about uh, using uh, Ansible. Uh, so uh, I uh, I guess it depends on the kind of use case that you're using Ansible for, uh, but uh, it does uh, the API CTL capabilities are not uh, 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 limited to a particular set of tools like Marlin the mentioned. Uh, so you can use it depending uh, on uh, your particular organization, the tools that you already have. Uh, so you could integrate it. Uh, so it's a very open-ended question about how you can integrate it with Ansible. So I don't really know about the use case uh, and how you are using Ansible in this scenario. But uh, there is no limitation on the API CTL side. Uh, you can integrate it with whatever tools that you have uh, currently that you use to do uh, CI CD uh, and use it in uh, in that context. Uh, so the example that we used today was just an example to demonstrate. So like I, uh, uh, so there are many other ways and many other ways, tools that you can use to con configure it and use it. Uh, yeah, uh, you said this CICD works only with 3.2.0 version and no earlier versions. Uh, what if we apply latest one updated to version three and then use it? So uh, I'm not clear about why. Uh, what uh, what you are referring to applying one updates? Uh, is it to API controller or API manager? Uh, so for API controller, actually we don't support uh, doing one updates. So we are actually when when whenever whenever uh, there are whenever there is a patch whenever there is a need to fix some bugs or something uh, so what we are doing is always uh, doing a patch release so um, actually so this is one is not applicable to api controller so uh, so anyway uh, api controller 30 has its own way of uh, doing uh, ci cd and the same flow works in 320 as well but additionally it works with uh, Native JIT integration. So even even though you are in 3.0 or 3.2 or 3.1, so it doesn't matter that you can create CI/CD pipelines in any kind of uh, API controller. So you can refer to our official documentation to do to do that. Uh, so uh, it's uh, the VCS uh, uh, deploy command that uh, the particular VCS command is the new command that was added in 3.2.0. So that has the native Git integration with it. But even without that, in uh, the previous versions, you can still take advantage of the other, the, the existing uh, import and export uh, CTL commands to actually do CI/CD. So all we have done is uh, introducing the native Git integration command to increase the convenience in the 3.2.0 version. Uh, but you can still uh, use the existing commands to achieve CI/CD in the previous versions as well. Uh, so I think there's a question about uh, what API Manager version uh, to be used with CTL. Uh, so if you're using API Manager version uh, uh, two six, uh, we have a, a, a two uh, x version of the CTL, which is actually referred to as the CLI actually so uh, the ctl uh, actually is compatible with the three series of projects pro products so you get uh, 30310 and 320 uh, uh, the api ctl is uh, compatible with those versions 
and uh, for 2.6 you will actually need to use the uh, the previous version of uh, this uh, tool which is referred to as the CLI. Uh, so let me add a small thing to what uh, Winter said. So if you are using uh, API controller 3.0 so it should it should uh, so you should only use it with api manager 3.0 3 so so if you are using api manager 3.0 so if, if you say if i say once again um, one more time api's controller uh, after uh, about three about api controller 3 you should be using the same version of api manager so so for example if you are using api manager 3.1 you should be always using uh, API controller 3.1 point some patch version. So the latest patch version, as I remember, is 3.1.6. So you should be using only that one. So you can't, you cannot use API control API manager 3.0 with latest API controller v 3.2. So uh, let's make sure so that you follow the same versions. You use the same. Uh, minor version when you are using api controller and api manager so that is that should be followed uh, so how do we get those api controller commands on ci cd server to be executed do we need to install it yeah so uh, so we need to install the api controller into the ci cd server so uh, so can you share link to apis 3.0 CICD steps in your documentation. Uh, so, so, so it would be very easy if you can ask the question in the Slack. So I think uh, even if you even if you put it here, um, so we, this will the the link will lost after the webinar. So uh, so we'll encourage you to um, uh, ask any development related questions. So any documentation help help. For the documentation on the Slack channel, so uh, so we'll so we have uh, our team there, and so so we'll be ready to answer anytime. Um, so yeah, so we'll share the link to the Slack channel uh, at the end of the slides. So these are some of the links that we're talking about. Uh, includes the Slack channel link. Uh, so I encourage you all to join the Slack channel and you all can uh, interact with the team and uh, regarding any questions that you come up with as well. Okay, uh, and, uh, so I just want to encourage uh, everyone, uh, if you have some time, uh, there are, there's a small questionnaire that has been with some uh, three to four questions that has been sent to you all to get your feedback on the webinar. So if you do have some time, uh, we'll be uh, uh, we'll be very grateful if you can fill it. Um, so if you have any more questions, uh, uh, we are currently out of time. Uh, so uh, if there are any more further questions that we need to be answered, we will actually uh, email the answers to you. And uh, as uh, let me and like mentioned before, we will be sending the link to the webinar to all the registrants as well okay thank you everyone for uh, joining uh, today's webinar uh, and uh, we hope uh, that it has been very informative to you and uh, wish you all a good day and uh, see you again soon